Welcome back to GB Guns. We are out today with the new Smith & Wesson Equalizer. I have 10 rounds. We have a steel target, an ABC zone down there at about 20 yards. We're gonna take our cold shots. And my apologies folks for the lighting. It's November in the Pacific Northwest. The ground is wet, the sun angle is steep. This is what life up here is like. It's a beautiful day. It is. It's easy to shoot. And we're using American Sniper 124 grain NATO spec ammo, so a little bit of a hot load. It's not American. I'm curious to see how the rest of this reviews goes. I'm not unimpressed. I'm not overly impressed. I'm kind of absorbing it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll give it a try. And in trying to make the equalizer equal, I've got the 15 round magazine so that I can get my whole hand on it. Yay. Whew. No, ah. that's a smooth slide lock. I am not strong enough. <laughs> no, it's not happening. <laughs> Folks, that is a slide lock only, not a slide release. <laughs> All right, see how this thing shoots? Woo, it's so narrow. You know, the trigger is crisper than I was thinking in the tabletop. It is there. I just rained brass on myself. Interesting ejection there. With that being 124 NATO hot Turkish ammo, American sniper, mind you, um, it was pretty comfortable to shoot. Yeah, not too bad. For a lightweight, and I'm, I'm kind of feeling like you are, Tia, in that it's not impressed yet, but not ruling it out as a potentially a good gun. What we've got coming up next to find out if it is a good gun and also get some more thoughts beyond our first 10 shots, which by the way, those were our absolute first shots through this gun. We'll do the full mag plus one to see how it runs fully stuffed and test out these magazines. Thank you to the commenters on the tabletop that apparently these are the Shield Plus magazines, which is interesting because it means there's now a 15 rounder for the Shield Plus. And if you've got a Shield Plus, it means you can swap back and forth. We don't have one to test that, but thanks to the folks who said that, even though the gun had only been out for like three days. Uh, so we'll run that. Uh, we've got the um, trademark what's for dinner test to see what the gun will eat. Uh, 10 different loads of ammunition for that. We have the spinner test to test sights and trigger control on a little tiny target at distance. Then we'll do some practical accuracy before you get our concluding thoughts from both Tia and I. That's what's coming up next on GB Guns. Full Magazine Plus One, we're using that same American Sniper 124 grain. Um, I know why the uplul is included. <laughs> it gets pretty tight uh, to load. The 15 rounder is what I figured we'd do since that's of most interest to folks. I got to 13 and stopped. Round 14 I had to really, really smash in there. Round 15 was not going to happen. I am not an expert with Uplula loaders. It's nice that one was included. However, it was not helping me get that uh, last round in there. So we're going to do our plus one. Oh, that's right. So slide release only. <laughs> uh, and then 14. So with the 15 rounder, that gives us 15 rounds. So we're not really plus oneing it. Uh, the stress I was feeling on the magazine and Getting it in there tells me that it's probably only a 14 round mag. Same piece of steel at 20 yards. I'm just going to mag dump. It'll be nice if I hit it, but that's not the intent. We just want to run this thing as quick as we can and see how the magazine performs. No hiccups. Uh, the ejection kind of popped in a few different random places. A lot of people love to comment on that. Keep in mind that with pistols, the ejection pattern is more a function of the ammo than anything else. The ejector is fixed. It's how fast 
the slide rams that empty casing against the ejector that determines how far it flips and what direction. So keep an eye on that as we move into what's for dinner and we'll see what loads kick what direction. It's that time again. Thanks to True Shot Gun Club Ammo Squared and our patrons, we've got our trademark what's for dinner test. As I scroll by these, you'll see that each load starting at 65 grain has different weight, different overall loaded length, different ogive. We've got hollow points. We have steel case, aluminum case, brass case, nickel plated brass. We're looking to see what does the gun eat. We're testing three rounds here because we want to see does it feed from slide lock? Is there enough energy to cycle and pick up another round? And does it lock open on empty? Anything past that is just testing the magazine. We're just looking to see which of these loads is going to run the gun and how it performs on paper. Our first load for what's for dinner, I'll be shooting at circle number one, the A or the Inceptor ARX 65 grain. These are a frangible. Yes, I believe. They look like it. Super lightweight. That is very snappy. Nice little fireball too. Yeah. And on number two, this is a new one for me, center fire. Um, lead-free ball ammunition. This is 100 grain. It might have been on the channel, but I haven't shot it before. And for the Star Trek fans, what else does it say on there? Next generation. That's right, Picard. Circle two. That trigger is right there. I think that's the first time I've made a Star Trek reference on a video. And for circle number three, we have Koenig's. This is 110 grain jacketed hollow point. I like it when they're shaped like that. That is snappy. Controllable though. Yeah, it, I mean, we've only just started shooting this thing, but so far for as lightweight and compact as this thing is, it's not a, it's not unpleasant to shoot. No, and I'm having less difficulty holding that grip safety snug. Um, that was kind of what confused me during our cold shots was something was causing me to have to re-engage the grip safety and I just had to change my grip and everything's great. And for circle number four, we have SIGS Elite, 124 grain, 115 grain. Um, these are a full metal jacket also. And this is their 365 load, which is designed to perform in barrels under four inches. And we've got a 3.675-ish. It's about the same length as a 365XL. Oh, good to know. Well, they went low. They did. And on circle number five, also 115 grain, is Blazer's aluminum case because... We use aluminum and steel case ammunition in our tests because aluminum and steel expand and contract at a different rate than brass does. They also have a different friction coefficient within the chamber, which can cause extraction issues in some guns. Circle five. Those were nice. And folks, if you're wondering about the weird angles, we're not at our home range, we're out in the woods. So we've got uneven ground, we've got all kinds of craziness going on. Make it and, work. <laughs> and yes, it is this dark at two in the afternoon this time of year up in the Northwest. Um, next is some steel case. The old brown bear uh, tends to be a little bit spicy, 115 grain. Brown bear is a lacquered steel case. And Tia has loaded it into the 10 rounder, so the spicy stuff, I've got a dangling finger. <laughs> Thank you, Tia. Whoops. Let's see how 
the equalizer likes it. Whew. That trigger is softer than you expect. That round sounds soft too. Yeah, the recoil Sorry, impulse is different me. and it always has a slight mustard smell. Circle number seven, Federal's Punch 124 grain. This is not the nickel plated version. There's a lot of variants out there. Getting used to that slingshot method. Nice that there's those little expanded ears on there to help with traction. Woo! And it's punchy. <laughs> Man, that is some muzzle rise. No issues cycling. I'm pretty sure that's enough punch for two guns to cycle. Circle number eight is a load you may or may not want to have to deal with in the woods. That is a critical duty. 135 grain with the flex lock, nickel plated case. Nickel plated cases, by the way, are corrosion resistance and decreased friction for improved reliability. And they don't need as much maintenance to stay healthy rounds. And they're visually pleasing. Yeah, and they're pretty. Hitting a bit left, I'm finding myself squeezing the gun, interestingly enough. The uh, length of the grip from front to rear is fine for me, but it is a narrow gun. And I think maybe I'm trying to compensate and squeeze them a little bit that way. Circle number nine, Remington HTP, which stands for jacketed hollow point. No, it's high terminal performance, but it is fun uh, labeling there. 147 grain. And back to the short mag. Almost makes you want to teacup the gun. No, Graham did not say teacupping is okay. Did not group well at all. Let's hope that's me. And our heaviest of the day is the Ammo Ink Stealth without an A, 165 grain TMC. Uh, awesome, awesome stuff for shooting suppressed. We're using it simply because it's silly heavy for the caliber. Oh, it's so soft to shoot too. I, I overcompensated for recoil after shooting those last ones. So nice. Grouped well too. Looks Amazing what not, nice. not having a flinch impulse will do for your grouping. <laughs> so out about 12 yards away is our six inch Titan Great Outdoors spinner target. As you hit this thing, it starts swinging, making it harder to hit. The more you hit it, the faster it's moving. Our personal goal is to knock it over the top, but really what we use this for is a measurement of the learnability of the sights and trigger for control. Eight rounds of American Sniper 124 grain. A little left, left again, left edge. learn some things I think <laughs> eventually I could do it um, I think the sights might be off just a little given yeah. that I was hitting I was aiming dead center hitting left and then had to aim right to hit center um, it could just be me we'll confirm that obviously when Graham shoots <laughs> and knocks it over the top but as far as learnability of the trigger and uh, working that in with the grip safety also I didn't seem to have any problems and I hope that you agree that I got better, you know, the more that I so it is a very learnable system. It would just take me more than eight rounds. Yeah, it's easy to look at the polymer frame and think this is a striker fired gun, but it's actually hammer fired. There's an internal hammer and I think that's helping the trigger feel a little crisper than most modern guns learnable. these days. Yeah. yeah. All right. Eight more rounds of that American Sniper 124 grain. Oh, 
die out stand. too? No. Oh, <laughs> that would have been well timed. <laughs> uh, one more round. Uh, yeah, as Tia was was getting at, because it's hammer fired, it's pretty crisp. Um, pretty easy to time shots with this. The sights are just standard three white dots. Not particularly great, um, but not terrible either. They they function and. That's kind of how I'm feeling about this gun so far, just in general. It's just, there's nothing really to complain about. Nothing to get too excited about. Coming up next, we'll do some practical accuracy. I think we'll stick with the same, same ammo, just because we don't have match ammo anymore. Um, yeah. Our practical accuracy is aiming at a one inch square from seven yards. Tia's aiming at that left one, and you see there's already shots there, uncharacteristically, bad shots with the first load that we tried. Remember, we're out of match ammo. So we're now gonna try the uh, Ammo Ink Stealth since it did really well before. You guys can see the holes that are already there. Watch for five new ones. Still a little wild, but better than the first load was. Five shots from seven yards using the same ammo ink stealth, 165 grain, and of course the right circle square. Hmm. Hmm, indeed. I had a rough time thoughts to you. Um, had this been out when I chose my carry gun, I probably would have went with this because it's a little bit easier to operate. Um, I'm still, like, I love that this is a great slide lock, but I've also learned to <laughs> enjoy <laughs> being able to release my slide with them. Um, the grip safety, obviously I'm not super familiar with, and I found at first that it was confusing and causing me to notice my grip more. And I did have to firm that up quite a bit to get it from dis to keep it from disengaging upon recoil. So I had that happen a couple of times during, you know, my uh, first 10 shots. Um, as far as learning the sights, they're easy. The sights are easy to learn whatever was going on there with the accuracy that is a me thing that is no representation of the gun and i'm not going to go into that um you know just a thought on that um as i'm sitting here trying to figure it out myself since it's been a while since we've shot and with this low light and those dots being so bright is it possible that you were just aiming with the dots versus following the top edge of the sights like we normally do for precision no because that's i was paying attention to what my target was in ensuring that I had equal light on the sides and that, you know, I had a flat surface on the top. Um, closing one eye was giving me a little bit of difficulty, but the sides did not allow me to shoot with both eyes open. So, um, in the trigger, I didn't mind the trigger. It's, uh, when dry firing it, I'm not crazy about it. There's a lot of overanalyzation that you can gather when you're dry firing where a trigger is concerned. Once you add all of the actual functioning of the gun into that, it is minimized and it's a very controllable, very learnable trigger. Um, overall, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with the equalizer. Interesting accuracy results. Now, I might also be tired or cold or hungry. It has been a long day. However, out of a total of 12, 13 effective groups that we shot today, only one of them was tight, which leads me to believe it's mechanical with the gun. And that's across a total of 11 different loads of ammunition. Is that a bad thing? Not really. 
This is a defensive tool. Um, you don't need to shoot a one inch square from seven yards. You need to shoot a 18 inch <laughs> wide target from seven yards and in. Um, of course, there are examples to counter that. You guys can argue about that in the comments. The gun itself though, as far as quality, doesn't feel bad. It, um, I'm still not particularly excited about it, but I really can't harp on it either. I think um, the pricing, it's, it's hard to say these days what is a fair price for a gun, but I would put this as a good average gun. It was reliable, the trigger was nice. Uh, everything's fairly comfortable and easy to use on it. It is a very narrow gun, so it's going to probably conceal very well and be comfortable for that. That narrowness, narrowness in my hands led me to squeeze a little bit, but that's because I've got large hands. Not a gun I would shy away from. I don't think I would necessarily recommend it to someone, but I wouldn't say, oh darn, you wasted your money if someone had one. What level of shooter, what level of experience in a, a shooter would you recommend that for? Is it for a new shooter? Or does someone need to have a little bit of practical knowledge? Uh, the only thing tricky about it is the fact that it doesn't have a slide release. That's kind of, uh, <laughs> happened there. Of course there. it works now. Course now. <laughs> Let's see if I can do it with empty mag. It's just really, really stiff. So you have to slingshot it, but they have the built-in ears and that's something that can be learned. I, I think it's a good general purpose gun. Um, so that might attract newer shooters. I say general purpose in that it's slim enough and with a 10 round magazine, certainly small enough to be easy for carry. However, with the longer barrel, you're getting a, a good sight radius and good recoil control. It's a very pleasant gun to shoot. So it's one of the few guns that could be carry and training. And that I think gives it, I gotta give it props for that. I, and I, as I'm listening to you and going through some things in my head, I don't know that I would recommend that to a new shooter. shooter. Um, I think given that it has that grip safety, mind you, I've not been in a heated handgun fight, um, but that could leave them, you know, once they've brandished their weapon, if they don't know how to use that firmly and are just excited in that moment, that could make them a target. But to counter your point, just to be devil's advocate, um, if this is gonna be a carry gun, appendix carry in particular, that grip safety is a nice way of knowing that nothing bumping this is going to set it off. Yes. So, yes, six so if you're carrying an appendix, make sure you have nothing that's going to hit that, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's, um, it's a new and different offering. I guess we could say that. I'm just noticing something I didn't comment on in the tabletop. There's a, a breech block insert in the slide, which makes me wonder what the slide's made out of, why there's a specific insert there. Interesting gun. Uh, I, I guess that's a positive too. It's one of the first new guns that's come out that has not just been another of everything else. I think it's gonna find its own spot. We're really curious to hear what you guys think of the equalizer. Now that it's been out for a while, I'm sure this is not the first review you've seen on it. Have you handled one yet? What do you think of it? Uh, did Smith & Wesson find the mark, create a new mark, or miss the mark? Thanks for watching.